The prophet Daniel was given many end time prophecies which he did not understand. When he asked the Lord to explain them, he was told that they would not be understood until the time came for them to be fulfilled. Are we in that period of time today when we are understanding end time prophecies that no one has ever understood before? And if so, does that mean we are living in the season of the Lord's return? Stay tuned for the opinions of 16 Bible prophecy experts. Lamb and Lion Ministries presents Christ in Prophecy, a program that focuses on the fundamentals of Bible prophecy, showing how current events in the news relate to biblical predictions of end time events and the soon return of Jesus. Now, here's your host, Dr. David Reagan. Greetings in the name of Jesus, our blessed hope, and welcome to Christ in Prophecy. Two weeks ago, we began broadcasting a series of programs about the prophecies contained in the book of Daniel. We are featuring the responses of 16 Bible prophecy experts who are responding to my questions about the book. The first week, we asked them to respond to the accusations of theological liberals that the book of Daniel is a fraud that was written long after the time of Daniel. They responded very strongly by defending the book in many ways, but their fundamental argument was that Jesus Himself recognized the validity of the book and quoted from it. Last week, we asked them to tell us whether or not they believe there is a time gap in Daniel's famous prophecy of the 70 weeks of years. All agreed that such a time gap exists and that it is the current church age. Accordingly, they agreed that once the church age ends with the rapture of the church, the final seven years of Daniel's prophecy will occur in the form of the tribulation. Now, if you missed those two programs, you can find them on our website at lambline.com. You can also find many other television and video programs there, all of which you can watch online. This week, we're going to continue with our interviews of our Bible prophecy experts, and our question this week pertains to the 12th chapter of Daniel, where God told Daniel that some of his prophecies would not be understood until the time comes for them to be fulfilled. Our question is this, are we in that time now, and if so, are we understanding prophecies we have never understood before, and if so, what are some examples? Well, yes, I think, uh, you know, one of the opening prophetic chapters of Daniel in chapter 2 where, where Daniel uh, interprets the dream of King Nebuchadnezzar on the successive Gentile empires that will rule over Israel. Uh, in that interpretation given to Daniel, uh, God told him only initially that the first one would be the Babylonian Empire. He didn't really explain to him what the others would be. Uh, later on in chapters uh, chapter eight in the the valley the the vision rather of the uh, the ram and the he goat, he reveals to him the next two empires, which are the medo Persian Empire and the Greek Empire. But the fourth empire, the one that Daniel was most interested in and asked about, God doesn't specifically say it's the Roman Empire, but in Daniel chapter nine it's revealed to Daniel that the people of that empire would, would, would destroy Jerusalem. And from history, we know that it was the Romans who destroyed Jerusalem in 70 A.D. And so uh, we know that the people of the Antichrist, according to that, is the Roman Empire. Daniel, I'm not sure if he really understood for sure who that fourth empire was, uh, but God then begins to give him many other details about that coming Roman Empire including that last stage or last phase of it represented by the feet of the statue in Nebuchadnezzar's dream, which is uh, uh, not a solid iron, but iron that's been mixed with clay, indicating a kind of weakness that would be in that last stage of the revived Roman Empire. And um, I, I don't think that Daniel fully understood those that last empire. I think that uh, from where we are in history, obviously we can look back at it Having now gone beyond 70 A.D., we can understand it much better and we can see uh, that future revived Roman power. So I think that's one example of the things that Daniel probably did not fully understand. And uh, there there are probably others, but Daniel is told in chapter 12 to close up the book and seal it because it was for many days to come and it was not all for his time. 
And so I think he, he could accept that and realize that uh, he was the recorder, the messenger, but he was not the one who would re- be able to explain all of it to everybody. One of the things that comes to mind is Daniel 7, verse 23. Uh, it talks about the final empire that would exist before the second advent of Jesus. It's the fourth beast, and it says it's going to subdue. And the, t- the language is very specific. It's going to subdue the whole world. And that's talking about a one-world government. And I don't think Daniel, in his time period, could have ever seen something like that with his own eyes. You know, he was prophesying during the days of Neo-Babylonia, and that was a localized government. But he's revealing something that would be uh, have jurisdiction over the whole world in Daniel 7, verse 23. And look at what's happening today. Uh, Look at the plans in store for a one-world government. Look at how these politicians, no matter what party they're in, they can't even get through a speech without mentioning globalism in in some way. So clearly uh, we're living in the time period where we've caught up to Daniel's prophecies of globalism. Well, in the prophecies Daniel has given, especially in the issue of the um, four empires and the final ruler, of the fourth empire, the Antichrist, there are a lot of gaps in the information. And so you could not just take the book of Daniel and develop a full-scale chronological sequence of events. So Daniel is told to seal the book. It would not be fully understood in his time. Not that nothing could be understood, but a lot could not be understood. When uh, John finishes Revelation, he's told the opposite, do not seal the book because the missing things in Daniel are then provided by revelation. They combine the two books, you can get a good uh, study of the sequence of events. And so um, the reason Daniel is told uh, they won't be fully understood is only because there's gaps in the information, those gaps we now have in Revelation. Well, that's Daniel chapter 12 and verse number 4. He says that many shall run to and fro and knowledge shall be increased. Uh, Dave, I, I believe we see that knowledge being increased today in the 21st century. I have no doubt in my mind that Daniel longed to, to want to understand uh, these prophecies, but he could not understand them in his day. But in the last days, those who will seek to understand and read these prophecies will be able to do so. Listen, I tried reading the Bible before I became a born-again Christian, and it was like trying to read Chinese. I could not understand one iota of that book. But when I got saved and the Holy Spirit of God came to reside within me, that's, that's the last day's ministry of the Holy Spirit. John chapter 14, John chapter 15, John chapter 16 tells us he will enlighten us to understand these very prophecies. Psalm 119 verse 18, open thou mine eyes that I may behold wondrous things out of thy law. So it's the Holy Spirit of God that illuminates us to understand these very prophecies. He told Daniel, uh, Daniel, you're going to seal the book and these prophecies are not going to happen in your lifetime. But yet he tells John in Revelation uh, uh, chapter uh, 22 and verse 10, seal not the sayings of the prophecy of this book for the time is at hand. That's talking about the imminency of the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ that could happen at any moment, at any time. And until that happens, knowledge will be increased in understanding these last days prophecies. In the second chapter of Daniel, it's recorded that Nebuchadnezzar lay on his bed one night and he had a dream. Nebuchadnezzar was the king of Babylon, a very powerful man, a very powerful empire. And he saw a statue uh, with, that it was composed of four different kinds of metals. And he didn't understand what this statue meant. So Daniel was called in eventually and he interpreted this, uh, this dream for Nebuchadnezzar. Nebuchadnezzar was wondering, what's going to happen in the last days and later years? After I'm gone, what is life going to be like? Who's going to be running things? And Daniel's interpretation of that dream is the answer to Nebuchadnezzar's question about what is going to happen in later days. Specifically, Daniel talked about the four empires, the Babylonian Empire, which Nebuchadnezzar was a part of, then the Medo-Persian, then the Greek, and then the Roman Empire. But very, very interestingly, the part that just uh, just uh, grabs my attention is that dream ends with a stone that is cut out of this mountain without human hands. And that stone becomes the dominant, the premier kingdom over all the earth 
crushing even any memory of the original four. And that is not understood. That could not be understood until the days in which we're living right now. And that is the kingdom of Jesus Christ. Well, it, when Daniel received his prophecy, there were still other prophecies that were yet to be uh, yet to be given. God told Daniel to seal his book until the time of the end, or Daniel's book would be sealed. Now we know that Daniel understood a lot of the prophecies that God gave him, but he didn't. God didn't give him everything. Uh, as a matter of fact, the scripture even tells that Daniel got sick at times because he couldn't understand all of the prophecy. But God told him to seal it because there was more to be revealed. We do know when we get to the book of Revelation, chapter 22, John, when he receives the conclusion of the matter, the Bible says God told John uh, not to seal the book because uh, the time was at hand. So Daniel's prophecy was uh, was sealed until the time of the end. And then when 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 John received the end of the prophecy, we have a, a full we have, we have the two bookends of prophecy complete. Uh, if one means by that, you have to get closer to the time of the end to understand this. Uh, it's interesting to me that in Daniel, Daniel was told, seal up the prophecy. You're not going to figure this all out right now. Whereas in Revelation, the seals are opened by the Lamb and the judgments are then poured out. Uh, I, I think what God was saying to Daniel is, first of all, Daniel, you're wanting to know three things. When is the Messiah going to come? When are the Jews going to get to go back and rebuild the city of Jerusalem? And thirdly, when are they going to rebuild the temple? If you were living in 535 B.C. in the 6th century like Daniel was, and you were Jewish, you'd want to know when's this going to happen. And then when the Lord tells him, it's not going to happen for a long time. It's not going to happen for 483 years, 69 sevens, even from a decree that hadn't even been issued yet to rebuild the city till the Messiah comes, and then he's going to get killed, Daniel. And then the city's going to be destroyed, and the sanctuary's going to be destroyed. Now, if you were Jewish, and you were just making this stuff up out of your head, you would never say that. You'd want the Messiah to come, conquer the world. You'd want him to rebuild the temple. You'd want him to bring in the kingdom right then and there. But that was not what was going to happen. And God revealed to Daniel exactly what was going to happen in the future. And Daniel recorded it, whether he liked it or not. Uh, the Messiah will eventually come. He will be killed. Uh, the city will be destroyed. The sanctuary, the second temple, will be destroyed as well. Uh, this was bad news uh, from a Jewish perspective, and yet it was exactly what was going to happen. I think God gives Daniel the ability to look down through the tunnel of time, down through the halls of history, into the distant future, and see exactly what was coming in the future. And he says it with such precise detail, we know that it could only come from God himself. Yes, there were many prophecies in which Daniel wrote about, but he did not understand those prophecies. For example, if we look at verse 4, there were uh, signs of the times in which he said these things would be understood as we get closer to the end. Uh, Daniel was told, of course, of many prophecies, including the uh, fulfillment of the return of our Messiah, Jesus Christ. It says that in the end, the last days, people will run to and fro and knowledge will increase. We look today at the travel. My grandmother, for example, 91 years old, she actually says that she never traveled on the interstate road until she was well into her 20s. Now, as I go to airports, I see little babies on airplanes quite regularly. And so I think that we see travel has increased. We see planes taking off. People are going to and fro. Traffic jams are common. And then we look at knowledge. We see things in technology and science and medicine, things that are taking place that have not happened yet uh, prior to this time in, in history. I also believe that it could refer to the time period of the tribulation in which as all these cataclysmic events are coming upon the earth, People will run to and from the Bible to gain understanding of what is happening, what is taking place, why are these things coming upon the earth. Then if we continue, if we look at verses 8 and 9, we find that he says those prophecy, prophecies would not be understood until the end times. There have been some things historically and technologically, I think, that help us understand these prophecies. For example, look at the nation of Israel. When teaching prophecy, I'm always stressing the importance of the nation of Israel. Prior to 1948, it would be very difficult to understand a lot of the prophecies concerning what's going to happen with Israel. But now that Israel is in the land, we can more clearly understand these things. Let's look also in Revelation when it speaks of there will be two witnesses who will be killed. Their bodies will lie in the street for three days. And it says the whole world will look upon them. 
well, how could that have happened prior to the invention of satellite television? And now we have smartphones. And I think that's allowed the means by which many people will look upon these two witnesses and their dead bodies. And then finally, we look at Revelation also tells us that a third of the earth will be burned during the tribulation. Now that we have nuclear warfare, I think we have a clear explanation as to how that can happen, how it can happen so quickly. So I think those are just a few of many examples of the things that Daniel wrote about and how now we can understand a lot better. You are watching Christ in Prophecy in a series of interviews with 16 Bible prophecy experts who are commenting on the understanding and fulfillment of Daniel's prophecies in our day and time. Daniel was showed four great empires. He only was living in the first one. So discussion of the other three were all yet future. And the one he spent the most time on was number four. And number four was going to be a worldwide empire uh, led by uh, somebody that we later identify in Scripture as an Antichrist, and that would be the continuation of the Roman Empire, we believe. So Daniel was talking about something that he didn't know anything about. He could only be, it was revealed to him in Scripture, but yet to happen in history. Now, the Bible is full of uh, principles like this. Revelation has one. There's a battle of, uh, of Armageddon talked about. There's going to be 200 million at least there, and the Apostle John could not have understood that. Uh, there was only 200 million people in the entire world at the time he wrote that. So who understands the, an army of 200 million? The generation today with almost 7 billion people on the planet. So these things are understandable the, the further we get into history. Well, they obviously wouldn't have understood about the, necessarily how the Messiah, you know, the Messiah being cut off. And uh, that would have been a surprise to him about uh, the temple being destroyed. But I tell people that uh, technology is uh, trying desperately to catch up with the Bible. Um, and so we understand prophecy better than we just did 20 years ago. So uh, the closer we come to fulfillment, the uh, closer it is for us to understand it. And so I believe that's what he's referring to. Oh, I, I'm a tech guy, so I, I love this one. Verse 4, if I can read it. Uh, the angel tells Daniel, shut up these words and seal the book even to the time of the end. In other words, the end times. And this is it. Many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall be increased. So what the angel's saying is, Daniel, you, you just can't understand this stuff right now. It's too far in the future. There's going to be too many changes. And the two main changes you're going to see are these. You're going to see people traveling all over the place like they never have before. And today we can see trains and planes and automobiles, uh, space shuttles, rocket ships. I mean, people are traveling like they never have in history. My grandmother, who grew up in the 19-teens and all, used to tell me that she used to drive around in their car. It went 35 miles an hour, and she had to wear goggles. Otherwise, the dust would... I mean, we have traveled like we have never before, and two, knowledge will increase. The Bible says at the end, people will be obsessed with knowledge. And today, like no other, we have the Internet. We have libraries of information we can access. It. Just get on our smartphone, check it out. So we are at a time of great knowledge. But I think there's also a spiritual aspect to this, and that is that Bible prophecy will start being understood. You know, Daniel had to seal these up into the end times, but once the end times were over, this information would be revealed. And as we get real close to that end time, the Jesus' return, people are starting to understand Bible prophecy like they've never understood before. I think he says the closer we're getting to the actual fulfillment of those events, the clearer the details will become. I think the, in the context, it's talking about uh, people studying Daniel's own prophecy. Uh, it says the people will go to and fro, or they'll you know, travel around trying to understand the details of this specific prophecy. And I think they will understand it because they're getting closer to the actual time of events. Uh, people have said prophetic events cast their shadow before them. And so in one sense, you can see what's coming before it comes. You may not be there for the time of fulfillment, but as you're so close to it, you're able to see those signs along the highway that point to the final destination. Well, we see signs of the times, and I think we're living in the signs of the times, as you've written in your magazine so well, uh, that we are seeing fulfillments unlike anything that any generation has ever had. And I think the stellar sign is Israel being brought back into the land. 
No nation in the history of the world has ever survived being taken up from its roots and scattered somewhere else for more than 300 years, and they just sink in the sands of time, except the Jew. They did it for 1,850 years. And when the Lord got ready to bring them back into the land from all over the world, he used different means. And today it's a historical fact that Israel has been gathered back in the land amid trouble and tribulation that they're going through. <clears throat> it isn't the great tribulation that Jesus warned would come, but it is still troublous times, just as the Bible predicted. And uh, we're, we're on the cusp of seeing it all fulfilled. Well, it's it seems... There, there is a progressive understanding of revelation. The revelation has been given once for all to the saints in the scriptures, but our understanding of the of the scriptures has developed. There were the great battles over who is Christ. He has come, but what is his nature? What is it? Uh, is he is he God? Is he human? He is completely God. He's completely human, and they, they had to settle that. And uh, there are many other theological battles of understanding of the Scriptures that have come throughout church history. It's the rediscovery of salvation by grace through faith in the Reformation. But as we've drawn closer to the second coming of Christ, it seems like there's more interest and more uh, understanding of, uh, of the prophetic end times. And it's not that there's been any change in the scriptures. It's just that we, we understand it better. How could we have understood some of the things about uh, the restoration of Israel until they actually came forth? And now, now we're living in the day when Israel is a nation. Who'd have thought? Uh, only Bible believers <laughs> imagine that. And now it's, it's real. Uh, so, as we draw closer to the Lord's return, a lot of the prophecies make more sense. They may, we, we can understand them a little better. Daniel prophesied that there would be an increase in learning. I think that's biblical learning, uh, prophetic learning. Uh, and, and, and that's what we're seeing. Now we're understanding not only uh, uh, the prophecies about Armageddon and so forth. We're beginning to understand about Gog and Magog and uh, Ezekiel 38 and 39, there's been discussions of uh, other wars, prophetic wars, like in Ezekiel 35, and some have suggested uh, uh, Psalm 83 as being a, a prediction of uh, more immediate uh, warfare, Israel's immediate neighbors. These things were never uh, discussed much in, in church history. Now we're getting close. We can see these things happening. We see we read the headlines and uh, uh, everything seems to be coming together and uh, we anticipate the rapture of the church imminently and we, we see the stage being set for all the things being prophesied in the scripture. Well, folks, I think it's pretty obvious that our Prophecy Forum members are in complete agreement that we are understanding end-time prophecies of Daniel that have never been understood before, and that this is a sign in itself that we must be living in the season of the Lord's return, because God told Daniel that his end-time prophecies would not be understood until the time came for them to be fulfilled. We have thus far heard from nearly all of our experts. We do not have time to include the responses of all 16, but I would like to conclude with the response given by Gary Frazier because it is so clearly stated. Well, sure. You know, we, I think almost all of conservative prophecy guys, I know like you and, and of course many of our friends who write and speak on this particular subject, we all understand something called progressive illumination. We understand that that in the 66 books of the Bible that we hold in our hand, this is God's written record to us. That we don't believe in progressive revelation. We think God said everything to us that He's going to say in those 66 books. But we do understand that the Holy Spirit of God has a way of illuminating the minds of Christ's followers uh, to help them understand the times in which they lived. Uh, and, and the reality of it is, is this. I would go back 60, 70 years from our time. And can you just imagine a person sitting in their living room at home 
reading the 13th chapter of the book of Revelation. And they're reading verse 16 through 18. Every man, woman, boy, and girl will be required to take a mark or a number upon their right hand or upon their forehead. Without it, they cannot buy or sell. Well, that just simply says that without this mark or number, there's no way to survive. There can be no commercial transactions. There's no possible way before Al Gore in, invented the Internet and we've, that, that we could ever have experienced or understood the technological explosion that has happened in recent times. And so as we move through the years, those people could not possibly grasp what the future was going to hold with regard to technology. Our generation, on the other hand, we fully understand biochip implant technology, RFIDs. We realize that today we live in a surveillance society. And so uh, I personally believe that, that, yes, God is opening our minds and we're understanding things that no generation has ever understood before, which reminds us that we're living in the last days. Okay, let me try now quickly to summarize what our experts have said. I think I can do so by saying that the bottom line on this question is that because of historical developments like the reestablishment of the state of Israel and because of technological developments like computers and internet, we are now understanding end time prophecies that no one has ever understood before. And that in turn means we are living in the season of the Lord's return. In other words, folks, we are living on borrowed time, and the crucial question is, are you ready for the Lord's return? I hope so. Well, folks, that's our program for this week. I hope it's been a blessing to you, and I hope you'll be back with us again next week when we will continue presenting questions about the book of Daniel to our 16 Bible prophecy experts. Until then, this is Dave Reagan speaking for Lamb and Lion Ministry, saying, look up, be watchful, for our redemption is drawing near. Dr. David Reagan's book, God's Plan for the Ages, contains a comprehensive overview of all aspects of Bible prophecy. It's written in an easy-to-understand, down-to-earth style that you will find appealing. In addition to all the prophecies concerning the first and second comings of the Messiah, it deals with a host of other prophetic questions, such as, what happens when you die? What will heaven be like? What's the future of the earth? Where is the United States in prophecy? When is the rapture most likely to occur? Is the Antichrist alive today? Are there signs of the times that are unique to our day and age? The book contains a variety of charts and diagrams which illustrate various aspects of Bible prophecy. The book is available for a gift of $15 or more plus shipping. Please call the number you see on the screen. Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Central Time and ask for it by name or order online at lamblion.com. The book contains 42 exciting chapters about Bible prophecy and runs a total of 415 pages. Again, it can be yours for a gift of $15 or more plus shipping. Call the number you see on the screen or go to our website at lamblion.com. Consider ordering an extra copy for your pastor or church library. Thank you for joining us on today's Christ in Prophecy, a presentation of Lamb and Lion Ministries, a non-denominational ministry dedicated to teaching the fundamentals of biblical prophecy and proclaiming the soon return of Jesus. 